Well, hey everybody, it's Erin Reed from Erin Reed Makes, and today I'm going to bring you all the amazing, fun, crafty items I got from workshops, classes, or meetings that I went to while I was at Alt Summit 2020. So I went to a ton, a ton, a ton of different kinds of workshops. They were mostly at the convention, or at, uh, there was three hotels. The hotel that was called the Ace is where all the crafty and what I would call uh, anything to do with videography. Um, taking pictures, anything that was what I would call like the creative end and not the business end uh, was at the ACE. And so I spent a lot of time there, let me tell you. So what was some of the classes I went to? Well, this was one of the first class and good morning, everybody. Actually, it's afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody who is getting on. I figure since we're all stuck at home right now, let's get some inspiration and some fun stuff out there. So one of the first ones I went to, well, actually, this was, I think, on the second day. Um, and it's one that's been around for a long time. And it's just, it's really cool. It's really fun. You can take a wood piece and you can cut out with a stencil. So this is just like some stenciling material. And this is a one and done. Okay. It's a sticky material. So basically you cut the stencil out, you stick it on a mat, you place it on here, you make sure it's on there. She had it all done. It's from a company called The Makery. And The Makery, I try to keep all the information together. They are a company that's out of Tacoma, Washington. And what they do is they do a whole bunch of different kinds of classes. They do like the boards, they do a bunch of other kinds of stuff. They do parties, kids' birthday parties, open paints. They do all kinds of cool stuff. So I just love that there's like a place somewhere in Tacoma called the Makery. And in Austin, we have one, um, it's called the Craft Shop. There, there's these little crafting, there's also like the boards and brush, there's the sip and paints. It's a chance, not right now, stay home, but um, it's a chance to get out and be crafty. But could you still do this at home? Yes. So if you have some sort of, it could even be a stencil that you have that's not sticky, but you could place this on a piece of wood. So the wood starts off being like this, right? It's plain wood. So then you would paint it and she had already had it pre-painted. So she painted it in kind of like a bisque color, like this really tan color. She had already placed over top the stencil and then we added the final touch. This was a really, really fast craft and something just fell on the floor. That's okay. And so we just took a little piece of, a little bit of black paint that she brought for us. We just took a sponge and now I've got paint on my fingers. That was smart. And then we just brushed it on and we actually daubed it. We went like this. We daub, 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 daub. We got it all on there. We did two coats of it. And then once it was dry, we pulled it off. And then because we had an extra one left over and I was like, hey, I'm doing a video. Can I grab another one? She's like, yeah, sure, take it. And I was like, I'll promote you, don't worry. So I do wanna say thank you to all these amazing companies. Some of the companies let me bring a couple extra bits home because I told them I was gonna be going on on my on my uh, YouTube channel and helping promote what they do, the craft they did and all that kind of fun stuff. And so that was the first one of the events that I went to. So fun little crafty thing you can do at home. And like I said, I personally um, don't cut and do these kinds of stenciling works, but like the chalk couture, same kind of idea. Um, I have lots of reusable stencils. You can place that over a piece of wood that has a beautiful sentiment to it or a design. You know, dab it on with the paint. You can tape it down. Same concept and look how cool it looks when it's done. It's this wooden, you know, beautiful piece. Hi, Riza. All right, so that was one thing I went to. Uh, I got lots of little bits. I'm going to do them one at a time so it doesn't get too, like, crazy. Um, another thing I went to, and I did have a second video where I showed all the other non, there was a few crafty things, but all the things I got from sponsors. They were sponsors that were there. Let me make sure I have everything out of here. Nope, there's a little something in there. Um, these were all the classes I went to. So this is from a company called Pip Stickers. I thought this was super cute. They actually hosted a sticker swap. I thought that was the best thing ever. And so it was like, so this was, I might give this to my daughter because she might think this is really fun trying to decode the magic message on here. So it's a sticker club that you can get. You know, they have mazes. You know, right now we're all stuck at home. We just got told we have one more week of being at home and maybe even longer. We'll be looking for things to do. So happy I have some of these projects and crafts for our family to be doing right now. Yay. <laughs> uh, hi, Heidi. Hi, Steven. All right. So um, I went to two things with this company. One, I went, they had a sticker swap. It was one of the, I got the tail end of it. And so that's what this package is. I also sat down and had a conversation with them at a round table. And that's where I picked up a couple of these cute stickers. So did you love that one? I just think that one's really fun. And so, oh, I forgot. So she, Actually, um, 
Somebody didn't want their stickers, so they handed them off to me. So I ended up getting a couple of packages. So let's open up and see what this is in here. So this was the Kids Sticker Club Classic Collection. I missed what this was a part of. So, what, oops. But look how cute this giant puffy sticker is. This is like a giant, and that's what these guys are. These are big puffy stickers. So I love, I'm absolutely in love with this one. I just think this is the cutest thing ever. Just pop this on a card, a little sentiment, or even the troll. I mean, all three of these. So stinking cute. I just think they're so fun. And then we have all of these cool stickers. They just remind me of the stickers that you used to put like in the 80s, like a trapper keeper. <laughs> but look how fun they are. So many cool things. This one says, Dear Diary, today was the best day ever. And it's a sticker and it looks like you can write on it. But look at this. Look at the little, so cute. And then the glittery ones. So much fun. And here's some more. I mean, they're just fun. Look, these all have cute little faces. Great for planners. Um, these guys have been around for a little while. This is not a new company. They're based out of, oh, it said somewhere on here. I have their, I forget <laughs> where they're based out of. But look how cute. So I guess they, they have a sticker of the month. This was the February 2020 um, Kids Classic. Look how cute. Look, I mean, look how much was in here. So they give them a puffy sticker and lots of fun little stickers. They give them the little booklet. So this is kind of a fun kids thing that you can do. Look at look at these guys. So adorable. And then, so I had a couple of repeats because one lady was like, I don't have, she's like, do you have kids? I'm like, yep. She's like, take my extra stickers. Okay. <laughs> and now I'm very grateful because they can have, she, my daughter can have all kinds of fun with her and the neighbor girl. Our circle's kind of sticking, looks like Valentine's Day. Our circle's kind of sticking, um, together on all this and we're all kind of hunkering down and staying put and so you know we're all in it together we have a little cul-de-sac and so we all kind of hang in there together look how cute these ones are little kids with their little bear heads look at that and then these ones are ones that you can color so you actually can color this in which I think is fun so lots of cute stickers from pit stickers that was another thing I went and the sticker swap was literally like you, if you were liking one sticker pack, I think they had different sticker packs that they brought with them from previous and you could swap stickers. Again, I got there kind of late and I said, I'm so sorry because I was trying to get a ride because um, you had to get a shuttle from one location to another. I'm just going to kind of clean this up a little bit. So you had to get a ride from one location to another and I missed the bus, um, the shuttle, and so I actually got a ride with one of the people that was part of the show. And so I jumped in her vehicle. So I was late getting there, um, but not too bad, but she gave me a pack. So that's why I have all this fun stuff. So I have all these cool things left over. I'm going to put this in. I love this bag. The bag is so pretty. I'm going to go side. Sorry. Kids are home. Doors are opening. Things are happening around here. All right. Another fun class I went to. And look, I actually made this. So this is, and it's a little warped, but it's okay. This is a rope bowl. Isn't that cool? Hey, Beth. Hey, Heidi. I did have a good time. I had a blast. And I got to sit and I got to create and do crafts that I normally don't do, which is really fun. Like, I never have made a little rope bowl before. And that's adorable. This is the cutest thing ever. So this is the original kit. So, and she gave me an extra one. So you just need a big needle, right? And it had the instructions. And she actually calls it the coiled rag basket, right? And if you guys are interested, if you are, if you want to me to teach you how to do this, it's really, really simple. You just need some rope, you know, and depending on how thick your rope is, depends on how big your basket is. So this full length of rope right here makes this size of a basket, okay? And it's just meant to be a little basket kind of cute right and then you need some fabric so there's lots of different fabrics she gave us the fabric she she said this was an old um sheet so if you have old sheets if you have an old t-shirt those would work well and she kind of pre-cut and then we just tore so we tore and made strips i have a couple of strips left over here so you tore down get this part out of the way and you made strips and then you basically wrapped this around the coil and then you wrapped and wrapped 
And if you notice, you kind of sew it back into itself. It's kind of funky to get started. Um, those stickers are so totally eye candy. Uh, the, the basket's a little kind of wonky to get started, but once you get the feel of it, you're like, oh, I get it. But it's kind of weird if you've never done something like that before. It was like, what is going on? And I can't see in some people, um, which is why I got an extra kit. There were some people that came over because you were ready to go to another class and you sat down. And you're like, oh, well, this is a crafting thing. Let's do this. And they got all involved. And then they, some people were not crafters. That's just not their thing. And they, they tried. And when they sat down and they started working on it, they were like, nope, not my thing. And they got up and they're like, who wants my kit? And I want to say that happened to me about three different times, which is why I ended up having some extra kits. So, but I did finish mine. I did finish. This is one of the one crafts. I finished, I think, three crafts total, the whole entire thing. Um, I have done clothesline rope baskets on my sewing machine, but nothing like that. I would love to see. It really, really is simple. You know what? And I will make a video on how to do something like this. I might even use the rest of her materials because look, then I'll have the done one and then I'll show you guys how to make it. It does not take that long. And we're all home right now. I'm sure some of you have rope and a big needle and some extra material hanging around. Any kind of material would be just fine. And it's a cute little basket. And again, if you wanted to make the basket bigger, you get longer rope. And you just, your strips don't have to be that long. So yeah, we'll do a video on that. I think that would be kind of fun. Something a little different, you know? I love doing all different kinds of crafts. And right now we need some fun things to do while we're home with supplies that we have on hand. So basket making it is. <laughs> All right, um, another class, and this one's really out of my wheelhouse, and I went to two of these because I just thought they were kind of fun, and it's watercoloring. So this is from Amaryllis Anderson, and she gave us some really cute stuff. So these are all the things that came in our little kit. So she does these faces. Look at all these really cool faces. So she does all these amazing faces, and so she gave us this little kit, and look at this. Look how pretty this is. So she watercolored and then it's been foiled on top. This is Amaryllis. And she gave us some instructions about what to do and some basic ideas for what a face design is. For instance, there's these are the basic face shapes. You know, the, think of the standard, but there's also square, rectangle, and heart shape. So you start with a base of, the, of those faces. And then, for instance, the oval, you actually break it up. Everybody thinks the eyes should be much higher on the head. These are just some of the tips that she gave, but they're actually much lower because your hair comes down. So if you put your eyes too high on the head, um, so you kind of picture it in terms of a grid and you guys can see the grid that's on here. So not the top line, it's the middle line that the eyes go on, then comes the nose and then comes the mouth. And you kind of sent symmetrical lips. So the nose goes in the middle of the eyes and then the mouth. And that, I just kind of did a quickie sketch. And she has, I mean, if you look at some of her faces on here, like the shapes of the nose, it's just a little bump, you know, it doesn't have to be, but you know, it, it gives the idea of what a nose looks like. So she, this was like a 45 minute class that easily could have been four hours. And we were all like, Oh my God, you want us to do what? <laughs> so, so these are the faces I made. Look, this is me trying to do the heart. It looks like some sort of crazy person. And then this was the other one I did. I am not an artist, artiste in terms of watercoloring. And so I did it. I messed up. And then she came over with the pen and she just added some, she didn't paint anything more. I did all the painting part. All she did was she took the black pen and added some extra information onto here. And she made it look super, super cute. Because it started looking something like this. At first, it looked like Joy. You guys remember from uh, Inside Out from the Disney Pixar movie, Joy? That's what it looked like because it was the white, the yellow face with the blue hair. <laughs> but she made it look really adorable. And so some of the things she said, it's like, give yourself some eyes. You know, just, of course, she's got a million faces. So it was like snappy, snappy, snappy for her. All of this was done using a water brush. And then these are the paints right here. They're actually on pieces of paper, so you can take them with you. And this was the actual paint. So the blue, one of these is, I think I think it was this one is the blue one. This is kind of the, that color. Actually, this is this color right here. This one is the light color. And then this is like the darker black. And if you go over with watercolor, if you've ever watercolored, if you go over it, over it, over it, it gets darker and darker. And that's how you can get like the fun layers. So you can see parts for hair are darker. 
So, you know, I was just kind of like, I didn't have a defined chin. So she gave it a defined chin. So it turned out looking really cute. She helped me. <laughs> so there was that one. And I was like, okay, well, I learned a couple of things. Not that I'm ever really going to draw faces or watercolor faces, but it's just kind of neat to know some basic stuff. And then this is her washi tape that she made that she's got her watercolor on. So she gave everybody a washi tape to take home. So that was awesome. So these are the colors. And some of us had different colors than others. One person left their colors on their table. So she was like, anybody who wants extra colors? So this is the ones I was working with. So here's my blue. That's the blue I was working with. Um, this is this tone right here. Um, ah, this is the darker tone. And then this is kind of like the brown, the really dark brown, like you would see there. So I had some colors I was working with there. And she's like, have fun. I mean, look at the colors on her faces. She's got purples in there. She's got all really cool colors going on. So it really is sky's the limit when it comes to what you want to make. She did say in terms of the face shapes, the hardest one is the heart. And of course, what did I try to do? Stupid heart. <laughs> but I, I did try to do an oval as well. So go figure. All right. So that was another one. Love to create and creating faces. My other watercolor class that I did. This one was a little better. I actually got to bring home the entire watercolor palette. Look at that. That was pretty awesome. Um, you have the peerless watercolors like that. They're really cool. So she has made them. She's got a name for them. And she did a giveaway and a couple people got to take the home the entire packs of them. But you know, I've got like five or six colors. It's really easy because this is like a big hefty thing to take somewhere. But those little pieces of paper, you throw them with a water brush. You could do that with a couple sheets of paper. I could take this with some extra sheets and I can watercolor wherever I want to. So that's kind of a, a nice little thing. So I kind of kept it in there. And this was another class where we learned how to make. This was the, um, who is this? Okay, this was. Eunice Sun, and her name is Electric Eunice, and she's on Instagram. She's got really, really cute stuff. She's got a new book that's about to launch, and it's called Watercolor Botanicals. So if you're really big into watercolor and you want to learn how to make botanical stuff, this is stuff. She took it, and she pared it down, and I didn't do a very good job. I thought this one turned out pretty okay, and where we made the tall col columnar ones, and she took it step by step about how to do the background, you know, I kind of messed up because I didn't have a whole lot of space and I probably didn't wait long enough for a layer to dry before I tried to do another layer because we were short on time. And these are the paddles. I didn't finish the paddle, but I did a better paddle. This was our practice sheet. And she had us doing ones where we're like color theory and how the color blends and what happens. So it's a very basic watercolor introduction, some of it, which I knew, and then we played. And this is the one where I actually liked my cacti. I think this one turned out pretty good back down here. And this was my practice for the columnar one. And I like those. I thought those looked pretty, pretty good. So um, that sounds like what happened at the making at Woodstock making it wood suck. I'm not sure what you mean, Heidi. I think I missed the the, the layers that were, were the train of thought there. So this was the other water. And this one, oh my goodness. So we had to do, um, so this was kind of funny. So we all had to fill this in. Um, my name is Erin Reed. I'm, by day I'm crafter. By night I'm superwoman. I'm from Austin. I'm taking this watercolor class because I love knowledge. My friends would describe me as funky. TV and movie character the most related to is Claire, you know, from Outlander. <laughs> my signature face is just create. Lastly, um, I just met and two ladies next to me were Heather and Anne and they are pretty friggin' awesome. And then we put our information on there. And so we, we were doing this while everybody was sitting down. So we got to do kind of a fun little thingy there. And then she had a few of us kind of call some stuff out and, and play around with that. But she was a blast. She was an absolute blast to be in a class. And she was, we were listening to music. So she had like a music jam going on and she is a new mom and she's got a little girl. I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, but it's a baby. It was about eight months old that was there with us. And dad was there too. And taking care of the baby while she was the class. Talking about people giving the extra supplies to each other. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. It was very nice because some people are like, I don't have room. I can't fly home with this. I don't have space. And some people were um, just all different things. I mean, it, it was awesome. I absolutely loved it. So got to do some water coloring there. It's lots of fun stuff with that one. Cut that off. All right. So let me do one of the small ones next. So what the there was a company there called June. J-O-O-N-E. Let me show you right there. June. J-O-O-N-E. And they make crafting kits for all ages, not just kids. Usually you hear of a crafting kit and you're like, ah, it's for kids. Not this one. This one is specifically made for adults. So this is one where we had, and I was only able to bring home because I just wanted to sit down because I was waiting actually to jump in and do 
Uh, oh, it's a different class, but I'll show you that one next. Actually, after we're done with June. So this was coasters and they had a whole bunch of different paints out. I'll flip it over so you guys can see. Um, and so here's some of the inspiration they did. And then we were making coasters. And so we had lots of rubber stamps, lots of really big, nice rubber stamps. And you can see we had leaves and we had a couple of different kinds of flowers. And then we had paint. And so we daubed the paint on the stamp. We stamped it on the little coaster. And these are just, you know, thicker coasters, as you can see. Stamp it on, let it dry, and then you mod podge over top and you got a really cute coaster, right? Adorable, super fun, easy craft. I love this. You can do this with a heavyweight paper or a chipboard, same idea. You guys pull out your stamps, paint them up using a nice paint, and then look, I love the distressy. And I kind of blended some of the colors. I was using a few different colors. I got some gold action happening in the center there. You can kind of see how it's shiny. So it's just kind of a cool thing. And you could make a whole set of four coasters. And so these are just stamped coasters, as you can see here. Let me show you some other. So they're talking about how they have other kits. They have paper cutting kits. We have macrame, embroidered pencil cases, stamped fabric kits. And everything you need is inside of the kits when you get it. So that is from them. So that's June Creative. And I have some of the um, companies listed down below. And if I missed them, I will make sure I add them. So that way you guys can check them out because they were pretty cool. So that was every day that they had a booth in the Ace Creative, June, where you could go and it was a make and take. You sit down and they did this one on Monday and Wednesday. And then on Tuesday and Thursday, so I did this one Monday. And then on Tuesday was macrame day. And this was another one where a lady sat down. She's like, nope, not doing it. It's not my, not my thing. <laughs> Who wants it? She'd already picked out her colors and did, did everything. I was like, I'll take it home. That's cool. Give me something to do on the airplane. Or, you know, at the time I was like, I, I love doing crafts and maybe I can make one and then I can do one with you guys online. So it works. So this was the macrame keychain. I totally screwed up and was not paying attention and stuck it on a ring, but this would still work. And I could use this for something else. It's supposed to be, you have this piece is down here and then it hooked to the ring. I messed it up, but I can always go back and fix it. It's not, I didn't get, I didn't start this one yet. I just picked out my threads. So all this is, is you can use embroidery floss. This is actually, um, this is thread like baker's twine. So think of all the fun, cool baker's twine that you might have. And this would make really good macrame. Macrame is kind of coming back. So it's pretty awesome. And because she had a kit and I was learning how to do the macrame on a small scale and it's all just what you call square knots. And so I learned how to do some basic square knots. So I started doing some and I think she did like one or two of each. So I've got to kind of even it out. And then when it's all done and it looks kind of like this and it's super cute. So it's just kind of a fun little craft. And I think even my daughter would be able to do something like this, maybe with a little bit of some bigger thread or some bigger twine. I think she could get into this. So I learned how to do the macrame. And it even talked about how you pick the six colors because six makes it easy. And you could like do one of each color. You could do all one color. You can do pairs. You could do three colors. I mean, you could have fun with that. You can really have, kind of go your own direction with that. So these, this is what the craft they did on Tuesday and Thursday. And I didn't finish, but I got it started. And, I was, and then the other lady was like, not my bag. Can't do it. Who wants it? And I was like, I'll take it. So she, here you go. <laughs> she gave me everything, like the whole kit. So that was kind of fun. So now I got two of those to do. You know, in my infinite amount of time that I'm home now, I have things to do. And then I am going to switch gears because the next day, because I did that on Tuesday, the next day, Wednesday, there was actually a true macrame class where we had a ring and we got really big rope and we got to pick our colors. And some of us, you got to pick one color, but some of us were um, wanting to do two different colors. So this is the one that I did. And again, it was the exact same knot. So I was really happy that I learned how to do it on the little guy because then when it came to this, I understood the basic knot already, which is a square knot. And then I went through and I learned how to do like the, how to twist it through here or how to like leave openings because you're just doing the middle and the ends. So I learned how to do macrame, which is kind of fun. And I had never done that before. So it's kind of like this cool. And this only took me 20, 30 minutes. It was not bad. And as I knew, no, after I did the knot a couple of times, it's the same knot left and then right, or only go left or only go right. Or which, which four strands do you want to pull from? Do you pull these four? Do you pull four in the middle? Do you pull two and two and leave the ones on the end? And that's how you get all the different kind of cool patterns that happen in there. So 
we got this information. This was the original pattern that they had given us about what to do. But she's like, go your own way if you want to. There's no wrong way. And so here are some of the ones that she did. Um, and she had a whole bunch up at the top. And this one is from a company called Sunshine Craft Company. This one's out of Phoenix, Arizona. So they do, again, it's one of those, a creative space. They have classes. You go in. You learn how to do a cool craft. Um, you pay for your space. And the person who did the class, her name is Moss Point North. And so look at, you can turn them into like hanging pots. You know, all the cool macrame stuff that's been around for a long time. It's kind of making its comeback now. And it's just so easy. You could do it on a hoop. You could do it on a piece of um, a twig. Like you can get that twig, but like a piece of a stick, a good stick, a pretty stick, hang it on there, do the macrame from that, a keychain. So the sky's the limit about just if you want to have like some wall decor, lots of fun stuff you can do with it. Um, decorative rope, plain rope, um, baker's twine, so many different kinds of ropes that you guys can play around with and have fun with. So that was another one that I did. All right. And then let me show you. Sorry, dog just came in from a walk. My daughter took him outside for a walk. Name of the watercolor palette, that big one that I had, you know what? I have no idea. It's not written on anywhere on here. I'm not even sure where she got it. She was using the crap out of it. And I don't know if anybody even asked her. It had, she actually gave us a different paintbrush, kind of going back to the previous palette. This is when I did the, the cacti. This is the watercolors I got with the cacti. It came with this really, she goes, don't ever use this brush. It's a bad brush. It's not a good watercolor brush. So she gave us a better brush that is a longer point. And this is the only brush we used the entire time. And this is a 16. This is a Princeton, oh, size four from Princeton. She goes, it's a select round size four. She goes, if this is the only brush you have, you'd be fine. Absolutely fine. You don't need to have anything more. And they're just all little nice cakes. I, I really truly don't know um what this one is and it's one where it can detach which is awesome because that's really handy if you want to use this as your palette if you're blending and you don't have to worry about the lid um so yeah i do not know it doesn't say anywhere on here the name of it i will see if i can hunt it down and put that in the links for you guys so all right the first class i went to we were making look how adorable this is and i was playing around and puttering around with this and I have extra is look we made these really cute little look at that and she had these all beads for in a row and I might go back and change that because I can alter this any way I want to but look how cute is a little rainbow and she had lots of different colors and inside is just wire and then we wrapped um, it's a piece of rope and then there's wire and you put the wire next to the rope and then you wrap around the yarn. And I picked really three pretty colors of yarn, as you can see, so three cool colors of yarn. You wrap, 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 you tie a knot, you wrap, 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 tie a knot, leave the white on the end because it makes it look like it's little fluffy clouds. So really super cute. And then you glue all three of those together. So we used our Beacon Multi Grip glue for that. So we glued each of the three strands together. And then she gave us these little wood beads. And then we, well, first you want to tie your string going up and then your wood beads. And then if you wanted to, she said, if you want to make this like a keychain. So this is the wire, the, 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 um, I can't talk. Sorry. The wire. Yeah, it is wire. So this is the wire. It's a bigger gauge, but it is flexible. And you want it to be enough flexible that it moves around. I'm trying to see. I don't think I brought home. No, I think I left it. There was supposed to be like this could have been a keychain or something or this something like to hang or a clip. I thought it'd be really cute as a Christmas ornament. Like you could do these Christmas colors, but you could really have fun. If you didn't want to do three, you want to do four, you want to do five, you could. But I think three looks super cute. Any color of the rainbow that you want to do. And this one was by Laurel Stavros. She's the one who came up with this concept and he did this one. This is a pretty plaque class too. So that was a pretty fun little activity we did. I don't like the way I did the beading on the top. I was trying to do like some fun knots and stuff and it just didn't quite, I think the three in a row would look better, but I can go back and tweak that. But I thought this was a really fun thing to do. And then she says she hangs this in her car and she's got, um, this is essential oils. And I can't remember. She had two different scents that she was passing around. Mm, I got lavender. <laughs> she said there was eucalyptus and lavender. I got lavender. And then we got to bring our little glue home. And this was just the extra. We weren't sure how much we needed. So we all 
caught way more than we actually needed. And then we got this cute little bag to put it in. Everybody had these cute little bags that we got to put our stuff in. So it made it easy to bring it all home. All right. Another fun craft that I got to. Well, this isn't a fun craft. This was actually, um, there was lots of stations and that's the best way I can describe it. Um, and so this one lady, she had a station and the station could have been, I'm going to paper piece. Like I take a picture of you and I'm going to paper piece your outfit and you got a little picture to bring home. And it was of you, another person, um, watercolored your entire body. So they had like four or five people that were out at different locations. I think it was actually three, one for each hotel. And they were only available for a few hours. And every time I went back by there, they're like, I'm so sorry. I'm totally booked up. I can't take anymore. I'm like, no, I'm just kind of curious about what you're doing. One person was doing, um, coloring you out of Copics. They were really cool. So these really cool sketches that they did. Um, and so one lady, this, she's the one who did the paper piecing. So she had all these different colors of papers. And then she also had some paint. So she would paint the papers. Whatever outfit you pictured in, she would then come back and that would be your cute little outfit. But she also did all these fabrics. That's where this fabric came from. And her name is uh, Susie Riley. And so these are the three fabrics that she has, like the candies and then the kisses. So she watercolored them and then they turned them into fabric. So I brought, she's like, take a sample. I'd love you to take it home. I just think they're so fun and pretty. And then, okay, what else we got? What else? There's more, there's more. Okay, um, another class I went to. Here we go. And I actually, I had, I was waiting for one class and I mean, and it was kind of like this in between. And so I was between two different classes. Ooh, lots of stuff. Um, and I just popped it. I'm like, I can't stay the whole time. She goes, that's cool. Come stay for as long as you want. Just gather your materials. And then you can take it home. Um, and you can finish it at home. And I was like, are you totally cool with that? She's like, yeah, sure. So what she did, and she goes, your story is your magia. And so this is Hello and Speranza. And so she gave us, we got some washi tape. We got a whole bunch of really cute stickers. Little, really cool and powerful ones. You're doing an amazing job, really good and powerful um, girl I can, girl power. And so she had a station where you went up, everybody got this little book. And I'm gonna tell you guys what this is about here in two seconds. So we got this book and it's just a standard, you know, just a book. There's nothing really fancy about it. It's just white, right? And blank pages. Sorry, everybody's kind of going in and out of the house right now. So it's blank pages. And she said, okay, this is what this is about. This is all about storytelling. So we had all these prompts and they're journaling prompts. And she goes, what experience guide, what experiences got to do to the place you are today to that kind of, you know, to do the kind of work you do. Three people who have found impact in your creative life. Write a thank you card to each of them. What is your superpower? Where does it come from? What could you achieve if you're not afraid? What kind of impact would you leave in the in your home, in your community, in your world? What does it mean to be successful and live out the vision you have created for yourself? So we're supposed to pick a prompt, pick a page, pick a front cover, use the supplies, have fun with it. I'm not sure why this was in here. This is not in the right spot. So we had markers, we had pencils, we had matte pencils, we had stickers, we had washi tape, and it was just journal. Be creative, journal, have your thing. Um, and so this is kind of her thing. Your story is your magic. And it was just kind of like be creative. And I was kind of glancing around and this is not my forte. I'm not a big journaler. I'm not a big doodler. I don't just take a free page and go. Some people, they are amazing at it. Um, I think I'm too afraid to make a mistake. And that's my biggest fear is that, and uh, well, not my fear, my hold up but beyond just going in and doing it. I, I, I have to have kind of a concept in my head and I want to be able to redo it or pull it apart or see it kind of laid out. And so I'm a different kind of crafter in that respect versus just taking paint or pen to paper. It's a little different for me. And so, um, but some of the people, they were doing some amazing job. I ended up having to leave this and I was actually kind of frustrated because like, I just, I couldn't feel the inspiration at that moment. And I was, I just, I, I was kind of, I was tired <laughs> and I was stumped and I didn't have a good table and you were like, just create. And I was like, ah, I can't. <laughs> so I, I kind of was like, I'm so sorry. I'm going to take this home. And maybe now that we have all this time that we're home and I'll let my daughter kind of play around with it. She's really good at that. She rocks that stuff. And she's actually staring at me going, I want to do that. I like these colors. And so all of the colors they had um, for the inspiration was there was all the cool colors, but then they had all the warm colors. There was pinks and reds and oranges and another set. And of course I gravitated towards all the cool colors. So 
that was another class I went to, but had to leave early and didn't get to finish it. And brought it home and I'm still trying to, maybe I just need to sit this out while I'm, I don't know. Again, at, there's there's so many, I mean, look how cute this is. Look, look how cute. Anyway, that's where that came from. So maybe my daughter will do a page and I'll flip over and then I'll do a page. We'll see. She's staring at me like, yes, mom, I want to play in that book. Can I have the book now? <laughs> yes, my dear, you may have fun in the book. You know, but even just having a sheet of paper or just opening up your journal book and working in your journal. All those things are totally cool. All right. Another class I went to. This one was really cool. And I've already actually kind of played with this one a little bit. So one of the classes I went to was all about stop motion. And it had some really, really cool um, ideas. And we got some fun stuff. So when we first walked in, this is one where they had to turn people away. They're like, you can stand in the background and listen. Um, but then we had, like, there wasn't even enough space for people to stand and watch. So this one was with Colette Perry um, and Chelsea Makes. And it was all about different kinds of stop motion and different concepts about how to work with stop motion. Um, <clears throat> oh, you had to look up the meaning of Maja. Yeah, it's in Spanish for Matt. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely correct. Very good. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a 14 or 16 gauge wire. Sorry, I'm kind of backtracking and looking at some of the questions that you guys have. So when we sat down, we had this little kit right here. Um, and then you had either a large um, tripod or the little baby tripod. And I have a lot of tripods, but I didn't have a nice little guy. So I wanted this nice little one. And this is one that actually can fit your phone. And I'm not going to pull this out, but this will actually I will. So I, I am debating, and so it's a way to set up your phone because we were, ugh, sorry, that was really loud. So this is a little kind of a gadget that you can then screw onto here, and everybody, or you can screw it this way, depending on how you want to have your phone, depending on which direction. So that's kind of cool. You could go one of two different directions with that. So you set your phone in there, and, you know, it's, it's collapsible, so it can fit a lot of different kinds of sizes. And then you can do your stop motion. So the reason for the little flamingo is because she actually did a little stop motion with us at the show. Um, and she used a series of flamingos. Super, super cute stuff. If you ever want to see some really awesome stop motion, go check out Colette Perry. She is, oh, I think she's got, she ever stuff. Yeah, uh, just Colette Perry. Her stop motion on her Instagram is phenomenal. Oh my God. And she works with a lot of different companies. So she just took these little flamingos. Mine's kind of bent and warped. And she had five of them. And literally she had them like five in a row. They each came in it's a series of pictures and then we used it with this app called life laps and so what we got and i totally i'm gonna try and set this up is that and i've played with it once i totally forgot that i had this little piece right here oops so this is a little so this works with android on this side it's a way to take a picture without actually touching your phone so that's kind of handy so this connects to and it works with the app itself and so um, you can go through, it talks about things that you want to do with light flaps and how the iPhone or the Android shutter works with it and how you can turn it on or off. So here it's on, it pairs up and therefore you're not touching your phone every time you're taking a picture and it doesn't wiggle. Therefore your picture's not blurry. So it was just, it's a way to do it remotely. And then everything you put into the app and it makes a really cute little, um, it syncs it all up. It already knows the right length of time for each of the pictures. And then you can directly upload that up into whatever social media you want to. So I did make two of them so far. One has already been uploaded where I had a shaker card and I had four of them and they were all kind of moving around. It actually turned out pretty easy. It was not hard to do because the app made it super simple. And there is a, um, for the life laps, there is a uh, trial version, a free version that you can check out and see if you like it, if you don't want to pay for the full thing. So that was a really cool little lesson that I went to and I got to play with that. So that, that got to come, I got to go to do that. Uh, let's see what else we get to go to. Uh, oh, another cool one. And this is all like with Instagram and with my pictures that I take. This one was all about flat lays. So a flat lay is you take a picture that you would see on Instagram and how you see the main focal point, and maybe the main focal point is, you know, welcome to Palm Springs. And then you have your papers in the background, and then you have some extra fun things. So she had all these little bits and pieces that we could play with, and it could be just as simple as 
you know, these little guys. And I did one flat lay there with my name tag and also with Eileen Hull's name tag. And it's up on my Instagram right now. And if you're interested about my Instagram or about any of my other social medias, it's all Erin Reed makes. It's super, super simple. She says, it's as simple as you can take some things. This is if you're into social media and taking cool pictures. Like I take pictures of my cards instead of just my card sitting there, which is what I have been doing on a white background. Now I could do a card and I could add just like all the little fun flamingos or paper pieces, you know, sequins. And I've kind of played a little bit and I dabbled. It's a little bit of extra work, but it really does make a difference in what the picture looks like. So I kind of have like a little go-to kit now of some fun little bits and pieces. And just, you know, using cardstock, using, um, she just grabbed a couple of things here. So she, she had some pieces that we could put down and then she had all the equipment out and she had paper and she had different colors of background foam board. She goes, foam board is going to be your friend. Um, really just confetti pieces. Like these make really cool stuff. Flowers, paper flowers make really fun things. So everybody got a little bag to take with them. And she goes, take all these little bits. And I, she's like, these make the cutest things like those little paper straws that turn into little like a little strawberry. If the colors work with what you're doing, it's really cute just to kind of let it sit there. And it makes a really, really cute flat light or like the little umbrellas. Um, the biggest tip that I got from her, and can you hand me that? Actually, yeah, no, um, the roll. Okay, sorry, my daughter's right off screen here. So she goes, the biggest tip, and this is actually a little bit too thick. Picture this as being a post-it note or a really thin piece of washi. When you're laying things down, I'm gonna divulge this one to you guys. If you're laying things down, taking one element, your key element, and just popping it up and everything else kind of being underneath it. Therefore, you can tuck it under without messing things up. And you can have some fun, you know, things kind of flying out of it. Just by popping that up in the picture, it makes a huge difference. And it makes the picture really pop. And I was like, just the stupidest little thing about just elevating it just by placing it on top of something makes the biggest deal. And I'm like, that totally makes sense because on cards and on scrapbook layouts and other projects, we elevate certain projects too. Why wouldn't I think of that in terms of a picture I'm doing for like an Instagram post or for a Facebook post or for a YouTube thumbnail? Why wouldn't I ever, I'm like, duh. So anyway, so this is what we did. Hooray, hooray for flat lay. And of course she doesn't have her card in here, which I think is the funniest thing in the world. But that was, I tried to keep all the materials together that we did for each of our projects, but there's no card in here. Silly girl, she forgot to put her card in. <laughs> so I'm trying to keep everything together because now I have some really cute stuff that I can pull from, you know, other confetti pieces, you know, little things. You know, it could be also, for instance, like if I want to take a picture of a planner, I would put a couple of pens in there because you use that or a couple of clips or just, you know, having fun with how it's designed and how you put it together really does make an impact. So cleaning all this mess up. All right. Doo -doo -doo. All right. Another fun class I got to go to. Here we go. More washi tape. Everybody had washi tape. It's easy. It's easy, easy, easy. And you guys know, so this was actually put on by Amazon Home, but Amazon didn't make it. So it was debated because we had this conference and it went from the 20, no, it was the very beginning of March, it ended March 5th. That was on Thursday. So it started Sunday. So I think that was March 1st or maybe it was the 29th. I can't remember. Anyway, very beginning of March. So we're, we're talking about three weeks, two weeks ago now. And coronavirus was just kind of starting to get going. Nothing had been canceled yet. People were still kind of going around and going to things. But Amazon decided, nope, we're not going to go. So they pulled out. They were one of the only companies that pulled out before the show even started. Everybody else showed up. A few people, a few companies left. They were only there for two days and then they left because um, they were told the companies had already said, we're not, no more traveling. Everybody come home now. It doesn't matter what you're in the middle of. Come home now. So there was a couple of companies that did that. Amazon didn't even make it. But um, one of the other ladies was already on her way. And so she is with Amazon handmade and it's kind of like an Etsy for Amazon. So if you are an Amazon, if you are a person who makes your own stuff or creates your own product and you want to push that out, you can put your things onto Amazon, just like it would be for Etsy. Same concept, except you can have it be part of Amazon prime. So people don't have to pay extra shipping. So there, there's some, if you're in that boat and you want to pursue your own selling of your own handmade items, 
Amazon Handmade is an option for you. And so Amazon does have a lot of their own products. So for instance, you can get your own pen. So this is a couple permanent ultra fine marker. All of these washi tapes are from Amazon. You can get all of these from Amazon. They're Amazon um, made. And so they had a whole line of these Amazon basic pens, which were really nice. And then these planners are from a company called High Valley Paper Company. And so this right here is the, we got to this whole thing was decorated. I didn't do a very good job with my cover. I love the idea of the washi tape. And then I was trying to go in and I was trying to, I should have just said, no, I I'm not going to do it. I should have just washi taped the whole cover. I had lots of them and just done angles. The cover was not attached with the spirals. It was loose. I just went ahead and bound it. And then we even added our own little thing. So I might go through and do my own thing on this cover when it's all said and done. Um, and so now I have my own little journal planner. So set goals and create them. So here's some fun goals. So this is the planner that she gave us that has all the stuff in it. It's got lots of cool goals in it. And then contacts, so it's got ideas. So this entire thing, habits. Um, oh, there's even a little bag. In I didn't even look to see what was in here. So she said, basically, it was create lots of like journaling pages in the background. Here's a calendar that's in here. Um, so this is the little planner that we got. So we got some bullet pages in here. So I, there was an extra one. And she's like, yeah, just put it together and take it. So here, oops, this one I put, aha, see, I, I messed up. This was what I was planning on doing. So I messed up so much. So here's the back, the High Valley Paper Company, Amazon Handmade. So they're putting it together. And so this was the back side of this. I'm like, yeah, I'll do something. Or I can tear it off. I can have fun with it or whatever. You know, I can always kind of play around with it. So this is the, the cool thing. So self goals, monthly goals, same on both planners here. Mood tracker. I think that's kind of cool. Maybe 30 days, you can decide what your mood is going to be like. Are you good? You, you color code it. And, you can kind of look to see how your month has gone. All kind of neat. So this is from a company called High Valley Paper Company. And so she was there and Amazon was supposed to be there. Amazon was supposed to be, again, one of the other big sponsors, but they pulled out because they got told you no know, traveling before the show even started. They were kind of on the big swing of things. I mean, they kind of foresaw what was happening before I think hit everybody else. So there we go. So that was that one. And we got to keep our little pieces that we were playing with. And they had stickers out. They had some papers. And it was all stuff from Amazon. So we got to keep all those little bits and pieces. And then I'm trying to see what else do I have left. Oh, another company I ran into. And this one, these are little silicon bracelets. She has, a, and I had a set of beads. She gave me a case of beads. And she gave it to me on Wednesday. And unfortunately, and this is a company called Chomp Shop. Chomp, as a C H O M P shop. So Chomp chop shop and these are jewelry pieces and beads that you can wear if you've got an infant and they're ma all made of silicone so it's no big deal if they bite on them or tear them I mean it's not gonna that you can wash them they're all dishwasher safe so it's really kind of an easy piece of jewelry that looks kind of cute this was just one of them that you can wear with kids and like I said she gave me a set of beads and Wednesday night I lost a water bottle I lost a set of beads that case of beads I lost, I'm going to show you another part of a craft. I lost pieces. Like, I think my bag fell over and some things rolled out and I don't know where that happened. And so that was one of the pieces that got lost, but I, I had the bracelet on me, so it didn't get lost. So I got to bring that one home. And this one was really pretty. A uh, teacher friend of mine said to write in her journal with your children or let your children write about what they are seeing, doing, experiencing right now with the, oh, Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. And this little journal, because it, it's got all these cool things, they may not be able to write in there, but they could do, like, what color are they feeling? You know, and you have different colors. Am I feeling scared, good, bad, okay? I mean, so all of those definitely could be something that they could be doing right now. Definitely, definitely, definitely. That's, a, that's an awesome idea. It's a really, really cool idea. So this came from Chomp Shop. Chomp Shop. I have a hard time saying that. Um, another company that was there, uh, Teresa, Teresa Collins was there. I don't know if you guys know who she is. This is one of her pens, really, really cute pen. Um, I got this when I was at, so she was there doing a speaking event and I do work with her. I actually help her with her YouTube channel and I worked with her for about a year and a half now and she's a super sweet lady and amazing lady. And, um, some of her products that she sells are through a different company. Um, and they help do the fulfillment and they help organize. And so, uh, I got one of the pens and I was like, Hey, I work with Teresa. They're like, Hey, I have a pen. That's awesome. I was like, awesome. I have a pen from Teresa. Now it's a really nice little pen. 
so I got that. Um, some other little fun things I kind of got on the side. This is another pen that was being passed out. This one is by Distill, Distill Studio Distill. There we go. It's really hard to read because it's shiny. There was a spot where you could put out your cards, like your business cards. And so people put them out. And so I grabbed the ones that were looking kind of interesting, kind of more like, oh, well, that was a fun way. Instead of just giving a business card, it was actually like a little gift. So I thought that was kind of cool. So I picked up a few of those. So this is one. This is her. So she made little Palm Springs things. And then she's got her Wink Photo Booth. This is a photo booth company. She has a little button. Dream on. And then we've got a, ooh, a tattoo. It says, love. Catherine, you want the tattoo? <laughs> she's off to the side like, yes, mom. I want it. So next stop, Main Street. Um, so this is a, I think this is two different people. So this is one that's got the Wink Photo Booths and then next stop, Main Street. So I just thought that was kind of a cute little way. Like all of this was packaged together inside of that. Um, some other cute pins I got. Just kind of, well, I have, this is oddball stuff that I picked up. Uh, Celebrate Women. This is from a company called Muse. These are both from Muse. Uh, they have bath bombs. And so this one says, let, let love be your protest. Awesome stuff. Got some lip balm from, from a company. Aerobics is back. <laughs> High fitness. Not sure. I must have ran into somebody who was passing it out to me. This is a really, really cool enamel pin from BookSparks. I love the colors on this one. So I got a cute little enamel pin. And then I had this one. This one was intriguing me the entire time. So check out Alt Sisterhood on Thursday for your chance for a pair. And it says, rip me. And I saved this because I wanted to do this. And it says, 100% recyclable. Dying to see what's in here. So we're going to do it together. Ready? I thought this was kind of a fun way to do something and she had this oh stretch me stomp me what is this sheer text just try to break me the impossible or sheer knit is unbreakable humankind sheer text I'm guessing is it kind of like a, a little feet of course I only got one <laughs> so it's the little stockings so they actually got a little sample inside but I thought that was kind of fun so we got like a little I guess it's to you put it on your foot the stomp test and maybe this is supposed to be for something else like maybe they have their own version of like a spanksy kind of thing so look i saved that to bring that open and open up with you guys <laughs> all right so that's a little fun doodads oh one last one there was another company called the admiral's daughter and they were making t-shirts there so they gave me a little sticker that was kind of pretty oh my daughter is holding something else up that i've picked up you want to hit him come here <laughs> all right one of the other things i got one of these free earrings well, I won the earrings. They're not free, but they're really cute earrings. I actually wore, wore them on one day. It's called mysenseofstyle.com. And so that was something that it was actually like a spin wheel. Um, they were the same company that handed me the Teresa Collins. So they make the products for Sense of Style and also for Teresa Collins and a few other companies that were there. So that was kind of cool. All right. Another lady who I ran into and I met when I was at my Pinterest event. Um, she works with felt. She's from Australia. And I cannot, again, her card is gone. Um, I do not remember. I, just, I remember all kinds of things about her. She lives in Australia. <laughs> she works with felt. She does the felt that if you are like doing a commercial or you are doing a movie and you need a cute little crafty project, like you need a giant like candy cane in the background of something, she can make that for you. So she did this cute little thing where picture a cup. And then inside of the cup, you put the layer around the circle and then there's a dowel rod. Again, bits and pieces of this vanished. I got pictures, but it's because this is live. I can't show you guys the pictures. She had die cut all of these really cute little palm or leaves. And so what you did is you took the leaf and I kind of showed you, there's a little strip right here. So you take a little strip, you take one of these and you glue it down. You use hot glue or whatever glue you want. And so you have all these leaves that are stuck. This one popped off. Because I left right before I had a chance for it to dry. So let's see if I can warm this back in here. So picture. I don't think I can get this back in here because it closed shut on me. Oh, there it is. Yeah, a little opening. So picture a whole bunch of these little leaves. You get a dowel rod and you wrap these around there. And so then you have this plant that's got all these cute little leaves coming off of it. And you stick it onto here. So this is the piece that actually goes. So this is actually the dowel rod. So it looks like a, it's actually a candy stick. These would all wrap on here with the leaves on there. And you make yourself a little felt potted plant is the bottom line. So 
everything was in this cute little container and that container got smashed and parts fell out. So the cup is gone. I think I actually have almost everything else I need to finish this, except for I just need floral wire to cover up the hot pink so it looks like it's um, green. That was the other thing. So just, so I might be able to finish that and create that at some point. And beyond, oh, there is one more bag. So one of the other events that we went to, we had these things called meetups. I keep doing the, wait, there's more. <laughs> there's so much more, so much more. So a meetup was something that, and there was all different kinds of meetups. And the meetup that I chose to go to was the crafty meetup. And so this is the crafty meetup I got to go to, and they had a goodie bag. So I thought that was awesome. So Alexandra Stapleton Smith, Stapleton Smith from Hedgehog Hollow was there along with Lynn Lilly and um, a few of the, like I said, Eileen, and I've known all them for a few years. Alex put together, I think she likes being called Alexandria, but for some reason it's stuck in the head. I keep calling her Alex. I'm sorry if that bothers you all. Alexandria. <laughs> um, she put together this little goodie bag for everybody. And in it, we got a set, a die set from her. And I think this actually makes an interactive card, which I'm dying to make that. We got a cute set of stamps that her and Laura Kelly have designed together. Look at the cute little kids that are on there. I think that's adorable. We got these artist free permanent thermal transfer markers along with the metal bag tags. So basically you mark on it, you heat set it and it's on there. It's permanent. It's pretty cool stuff. And you can do it on not just metal, but fabric and porcelain and t-shirts Sky's the limit on what you can put it on there. And it's a huge, so you can see all the colors that are in this particular set. So that is pretty cool. It's called sublimation heat transfer. We also got a little thing of glue. Um, and that same night after we went to this meetup, uh, we all went to the Beacon dinner, which was an awesome dinner. And it was really fun. It was lots of fun. I'm trying to see if there's anything else in that little baggie that we got. Um, Oh, there's one more little doodad. Oh, sorry. I got a little hedgehog hollow pin. And then one last thing hiding in there. I got a hedgehog hollow pop socket. So, because she helped kind of organize all the items that were in this little giveaway bag. So anybody who came to this meetup, there was a meetup for just people that are from Canada. There was a meetup that were for people that are into Pinterest. There was a meetup for people that were over 60. There was a meetup for people that were of color. There were a meetup for people that live in... Southern California, <laughs> there was people that for a meetup. I mean, anybody who was going to the event could start a meetup. It wasn't just the organizers of the event. So I could have started a meetup and been like, ah, meet up for people who love to make cards or whatever, you know, you name it. So I, anybody could have hosted a meetup between any of the three hotels. You just picked a location and you said like, buy such and such pool, buy this particular, you know, whatever. And you had a set of tables or, you know, we just kind of actually were hanging out by the pool on the lounging space. And uh, then we actually all went out and had dinner afterwards. And so it was really kind of fun. So we got a cute little swag bag of items, which I thought was awesome. Um, uh, maybe there's a list of people on the event site. Try to go back and read what you guys are saying. I'm sorry. Um, it'd be great historical reference. For, oh, going back to what the kids are saying. Um, oh, you're talking about the first book that I didn't know what to do with. That was the blank book on the inside and how I could write things about what's happening right now in the world and in our country and how everybody's kind of going, ah, and lack of toilet paper. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, any of the books, that I brought home any of the any of the journals. I mean, you could just make your own journal, just pieces of paper, staple them together, and you could definitely have fun with that. So, yeah, I mean, I kind of look at, and this is just me going on a little rant right now. I have all my kids home with me, and I used to teach, so if we're stuck at home right now, and I have to homeschool them for the next little while, I definitely can do that. I used to teach high school science and um, math, and so. I'm not so hot on the history or the English, but they know how to read and I, you know, definitely can teach how to read at this point and I can do younger kids. Um, and so just getting to this, but also like the arts and crafts, I think getting them to do the arts and crafts, getting them in the kitchen to cook, you know, getting them outside to walk the dog because we have our three month, almost four month old puppy now. So, I mean, I have all these amazing things I got to bring home, not only from 
and, you know, Alt Summit, but also from Creativation that I don't think we're going to be bored if I'm like, hey, we're going to do this today. Play board games with our kids. Um, they're actually playing together pretty good. Cleaning our house. <laughs> That's another thing that we're going to get done. Um, but, you know, we might have to have a sit down and do a journal thing. And so when I'm like, hey, you need to write write a concept of something. I think that's a great idea. Write how you're feeling about what's happening with our country at this moment. And as I say, my kids are doing well. My boys are upstairs and they're starting to get antsy because I've been on the computer for too long. <laughs> oh, wow. I've been on for a while, almost an hour. It's a long time. Yeah. My kids are like, you said this was 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. Well, I will get the puppy on in a later video. My camera is facing down and it's, he's kind of nice and calm because he went for my daughter, took him for a lovely walk. Super, super sweet. Do you want to say hi, Catherine? Hi. hi. All right. She's right here. All right. So we're going to say goodbye for right now before my boy's upstairs and I hear screaming and crying. Who knows what they're getting into. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Lots of fun events. So just since you guys are all kind of at home, a few things happening. This Wednesday is not a, I haven't decided if I can do a live video or not, but there is definitely a video hop, blog hop that is happening with some fun giveaways. So stay tuned for that. That is coming up on Wednesday. There is another one going on this Saturday. There's another live video that will have some amazing giveaways going on with that. And next Saturday is so the 21st and the 28th. And then there's also the Save the Crafty YouTuber, which is coming up um, next week as well. So lots of fun events happening very, very soon. I will be listing all those events and those videos and having them scheduled out so you guys can see and get your likes in there. Subscribe to my channel if you've not already. Hit the thumbs up. I'd love thumbs up. And also hit the notification bell so you guys can get notified of all the amazing events that are coming up in the next like two weeks, which is pretty awesome. So thanks guys so much for stopping by. Please subscribe and I'll see you guys in later. Bye everybody.